Never too late. Sorry, Linda. <laughs> mm -hmm. She is always one that appreciates watching this. We just started the recording. My bad, Linda. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Other joys, challenges. How's Jock? Uh, from, I believe he's doing well from his cataract surgery. Ken, have you heard anything since? I, I have not. No, I, I wanted to call him yesterday and didn't. I, so I think I'll try to call today. But as uh, far as I know, uh, he's doing okay. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah. So didn't hear anything from Pat either this week. So... Uh, we'll continue to keep those folks in our prayers. Any others? I also have a joy. Um, as many of you know, the congregation voted to put heating and air conditioning ventilation system in both the church and the parsonage. They started in the parsonage and I never knew 62 degree was two degrees was so warm. Um, <laughs> it's working great over there. We turned it up to 62 degrees and we were, we're like, this is hot. So it's working well. And they begin tomorrow morning in the worship space. So we're thankful for the granting funds that come from the district that cover almost two thirds of the cost of that project. So we're thankful for that. All right. Well, then I invite us to get back into, I invite us to a time of prayer. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> I invite us to find a, a space and a place where you're seated and get comfortable. Um, I invite you to take a deep breath in, in gratitude for the life God has given us. <laughs> And I invite you to release that gratitude into the world on this Christmas Sunday morning as you release. Again, taking a deep breath. If there's any tension that you locate in your body, try and soften it. And as you release your breath, let it go with that breath. Breathing in the beauty of this Christmas morning and releasing into the world the beauty that God has given you. For the gratitude we have, for the gratitude we share, our breath is a breath of life connecting us to the abundance of God's grace, God's mercy, and God's love as it is found this time of year in a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. I invite you to stay connected to that breath, connected to the God that gives you life as we share in a prayer song meditation.
Join with me in prayer. Gracious God, on this Christmas Sunday, we come with joyful hearts, hearts that are full of gratitude and out of that gratitude, the happiness that continues to grow. We are thankful for the peace that comes in a manger, a peace that passes all our understanding in so many ways, God, but a peace that brings fullness and wholeness, reconciliation and restoration. We are thankful for the peace that comes in the manger. We are grateful for the hope that it brings, the hope for the, hope for the joy, for the resurrection, the hope for new birth, new life, the gift of a baby, changes everything, oh God. And there is so much hope in new life. We think of those who have newborns at this time of year, the joy and the celebration and the challenges and the transformations. Join with all of them, oh God and with us as we are transformed by Christmas love. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Hear our gratitudes, our challenges. Hear our love that goes out to all of our friends and neighbors. Hear our love go out to those we struggle with and we have challenges with. Hear our love as we do our best to love our enemies. We know, God, that we're not perfect in that, but we trust that you know our hearts and our attempts to be more fully like you and share that agape love. As we move through this week toward Christmas Eve and Sunday morning, journey with us as we continue to anticipate the Jesus that has come and the Jesus that is coming. We ask this in his name, amen. We already listened to that. We're going to try something different today. Again, we're going to try and sing a Christmas carol. I have been missing singing Christmas carols. So what I asked Susan to do was play. And I'm going to invite you to turn your mics off. <laughs> and um, I'm going to turn mine off too. But the music should come through. And the words will be on the screen. This one is Hark the Herald, Angels Sing. Uh, and I don't think there's an introduction to this, but I could be wrong. But when the words come on the screen, that's when we start singing. So let's see how it goes. I just want to sing a Christmas carol together. So here we go. Good luck and enjoy. Wait. Oh, how am I going to mute myself? Okay, here we go.
You're muted. There I am. I had to figure out how to unmute myself because there was like, I had to scroll through all the screens to find myself. I was lost. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I sure enjoyed singing that Christmas carol. We'll have an opportunity to sing one more at the end of the service. So our scripture today is Luke 1, 26 to 45. I'm going to invite us uh, to read this text as we have in the past. One person reads a screen and then we move to the next screen and another person is invited to share, to, to share with reading. So I will start and then just unmute yourself and, and read when you'd like. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, and this is from Luke 1, 26 to 45, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the virgin's name Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son in his name, Jesus. <clears throat> he will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end, ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son? Old as she is, everyone called, his, called her barren. And here she is, six months pregnant. Nothing you see is impossible with God. And Mary said, yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. Then the angel left her. Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight to Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly, You're so blessed among women, and the babe in your womb also blessed. And why am I so blessed that the mother of my God visits me? The moment the sound of your Greeting entered my ears. The babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. Blessed woman who believed what God said, believed every word would come true. And Mary said, I'm bursting with God's news. I'm dancing the song of my savior God. God took one good look at me and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy, set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showed his strength scattered the bluffing braggarts. He knocked tyrants off their high horses, pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his so chosen child, Israel. 
he remembered and piled on the mercies, piled them high. That's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham and right up to now. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months and then went back to her own home. <clears throat> Bringing us off the chair again so we can see each other's faces and interact a little bit around this text. Um, what did you notice? What did you hear? What made you wonder? What touched you in this text as it was read? Well, when Mary was told that, you know, even though she had never been with a man, that the spirit was going to come over her and she was going to become pregnant, she seemed to accept it fairly quickly and willingly. And I might be a little more hesitant. <laughs> Just a little. Yeah. Yeah kind of interesting how quickly <laughs> she did accept that almost like angels were a normal thing in her life right and messages from god were kind of everyday occurrences <clears throat> what else stuck out anything i thought it was interesting that uh she uh got to compare notes with uh, Elizabeth and, and they kind of went through the experience together. And, uh, and then Elizabeth was, uh, was the mother of John the Baptist, I believe I remember. So uh, they, they both went through their pregnancies together and, and uh, got to uh, experience that together. Yeah, two moms expecting moms together. What a household that was. Zachariah must have went nuts. <clears throat> well, and it was a very active faith <clears throat> that Mary expressed because she, you know, she didn't just sit around waiting for stuff to happen. She like she she went immediately to find Elizabeth. So um, she acted upon her faith. Yeah. I wonder. What made her go? Was it, was it <laughs> curiosity? What? I was gonna say, it's, it's good to think that it was her faith that led her. Maybe she just wanted to see if it was true. You know, it's like, could this really be happening? Or she wanted to confirm it, you know, like mm -hmm. she, she wanted, you're right, she wanted it to be true. And then, she, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes I just wonder about these stories, right? Because we have um, idealized them sometimes in our, in our faith and in the way they have been passed down for us. We kind of lose the humanity in it. And that's, I guess, a little bit of what I'm trying to, to get here is, you know, maybe Mary had not a clue what was going on. And... Uh, she knew Elizabeth was pregnant, so let's go find out. Let's be with us together. Yeah. Oren, did you want to say something? Yeah, I thought it might be just as simple a matter as uh, she wanted to be with family. She wanted to, you know, who knows who else, what support system she had. Um, and often, very often, uh, Family comes together, especially women, women to women, get together mm -hmm. um, to to uh, help each other through pregnancies. Yeah, yeah. I'm always amazed at this story and how the babies seem to recognize each other, right? Because the story is that uh, John jumped in the womb when uh, Mary came up. And Mary acknowledges, and Elizabeth and Mary do this acknowledgement of each other and their, their blessedness and their connectedness. Um, and I'm, I'm always, that just kind of always makes me curious as to um, what that meant, you know? What it meant for Mary and Elizabeth and the connecting, the withness, <laughs> that they had with each other as their babies moved together. Um, 
in the womb. There's a, seems to be like a craving to be together, right? And as we move to the days immediately before Christmas, there's kind of a time to be craving to be with the ones we love. Um, and in many ways, that's not going to happen this year. And it seems appropriate to think about this withness, this community, this being together and craving God's presence in community. Our text, as you know it, it's utilized a lot at this time of year. And um, the Mary and Elizabeth and the two babies within and the women, the women who have the ability to provide a womb to hold lives that are being created. And they are the bearers of new life. They are the hope and the promise into which these pregnancies can be. Without them, life could not be given. Um, both pregnant, right? One by, by human conception and one by divine conception. And yet both blessed by God in their own way. And to, today we are again invited to consider Mary's blessedness, Mary's obedience, Mary's willingness to be a part of the impossible. Um, and I don't know, sometimes I think impossible is God's MO in working with humanity. Everything that seems impossible, God somehow in the mystery makes it possible. And that Magnificat that we read, that sings of God's promise to the world, promise that is held within a womb, promise that is held in captivity until it can be breathed forth and birthed forth. In it all, in it all, there is blessing, there is obedience, there are songs of praise, there is Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. It's that withness that makes Christmas so amazing. It's the withness, the desire to be present that is so apparent in this season, even in the withness of God as Emmanuel is hoped for and brought forth. I wonder, as we are in this Christmas season, and as we are anticipating Jesus' birth, and as we are wondering and thinking about this text this morning, I wonder, I'm going to go back to the shared screen, and I'm going to go back to the text, and I'm going to go back to Mary's, what they call the Magnificat. And I am going to ask the question, what are the promises that God makes in this? Mary talks about those promises, right? What are those promises? Maybe they're more apparent here. What are their promises? Cece, you read this part, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Well, uh, get those guys off their high horses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Feed the poor. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, pile on the mercy. Yeah. And the uh, promise of help of Israel from Abraham to Elizabeth. Um, I guess yeah. it shows the uh, awesome strengths. That's a promise. Yeah. And they're all really almost promises of God's present with us. Or that, again, what I say, that witness of God. Um, 
Mercy is an act of togetherness. Um, strength is an act of togetherness and he's scattering. So there's this promise of God's strength. He's, I love them knocking tyrants off their high horses and pulling mm -hmm. victims out of the mud, right? Just reminds me of the exile where all of the Egyptians were knocked off their horses. The starving, the promise to care for those who are hungry and embracing this Emmanuel, this chosen child. And all of it began with Abraham right up to now the promise of and continued blessing. And this was a song that Mary sang and it became part of church liturgies and part of worship uh, throughout the ages. Um, so in many ways, it reveals God's promise of the ages to the people that continually hear it. So another thing I wonder is who reveals God's promises to you? Who are those voices? Who are those people that reveal God's promise to you? And I might say, what's God's promise that's being revealed for that matter? Hmm. I think for me, I'll give you all a chance to think. Um, but I think for me, God's promises are revealed through people, through situations that I find myself in. And sometimes God's promises are revealed after the fact. <laughs> I've been through it, survival. And then I can look back and I can say, yes, I was promised presence. I was promised um, God's possibilities. Um, so sometimes it's Bill. Sometimes it's Ashley, you know, sometimes it's, well, you know, my mom at this point is revealing all kinds of God's promise of care and healing and presence. Are there those that you would like to share that share your, share God's promises with you? Maybe you all share God's promises for each other. I, I hear and see God's promises in nature. You know, in the, the trees that are perennially green um, and, and, and that burst forth with new uh, berries and seeds and flowers. That to me is an ever fulfilling ongoing pro process of promise. I was going to say that too. For me, it's the the animals and and how God has created so much variety, and how He cares for the smallest, the least of them. Ah, Oren, I saw your. Yeah, um, I think of the promise of the coming kingdom, coming and yet and present kingdom of God, uh, manifest. Um, in the lives of uh, people, of all of us get touched at some point, but the idea that Jesus is Lord and you're not, Jesus is Lord and I'm not, Jesus is Lord and Caesar is not, and that um, watching that manifestation when people go beyond what we would normally do and see people actually doing um, heroic and great things and even small things, small kindnesses. Uh, anytime love uh, is evident, that's the promise of God. Yeah.
you mentioned, you know, uh, rulers are not God. And I continue to be thankful that <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <clears throat> and I continue to be thankful that um, we are creatures and we are not God because mm -hmm. life would be a mess. <laughs> and think of the, go ahead, Steve. I think uh, miracles are uh, from God. Yeah. Yeah, those are the weirdest things, aren't they? Miracles. You can't exp you can't explain them and they are just impossible. And there was Mary, the biggest miracle right there in the beginning of our of Jesus faith story. And it's just impossible to actually you know, have that miracle story there. And I don't know about you, but it sure takes a lot of faith for me to believe that miracle story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we the, all know. <laughs> I think the promise of healing. Uh, and right now, well, on everybody's mind uh, uh, around the world uh, with this virus that we've all had to deal with in some way or another, uh, it seems like there's there's so much illness and pain and, and death and loss. And yet uh, we see that that things are going to be uh, getting better through uh, the strength that God can only give, I think, for for the development of vaccines that uh, and, and for the uh, uh, recognition that that we need to keep working on that and, and, and follow the, the rules that we know about. Uh, to try to get get rid of this illness, and uh, so I think healing will come, but it's not without a lot of lot of pain and yeah, and, tri right. and trial uh, in in the meantime. But but uh, we've got to have faith that um, the healing will come. Yeah. Well, speaking I, of go ahead, Cheryl. Speaking of miracles, to me, Zoom is a miracle. You know, if you try to imagine what this pandemic would be like if we didn't have the ability to gather virtually, it would be a whole different situation. And the fact that people can come onto a screen and talk to each other and see each other and, and have some sort of community, um, to me is a miracle. Yeah. I always think of my mom when I, when, when technology, you know, does these great things, because way back in the dark ages, when I first got my Apple computer, <laughs> she was like so amazed that I could type my a, my name in and have it scroll down the screen. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what would she think today if she were to see what technology has become? Although yeah. some of it's good and some of it's bad, but... <laughs> Right. Well, you know, as I think about the birth, there's no getting to the birth without the pain, right? And God is so present in the pain that birth comes. And, you know, Joseph was so present, I'm assuming, right? That Joseph or a midwife or someone, God was so present with Mary getting her through that pain. And if she didn't go through that, the birth wasn't gonna happen. Unless for some strange reason, that was another part of the miracle and she didn't experience any pain. But I like to think that there's always pain before new rebirth. And you have to be able to get through that. And God's presence is so real. And that witness is so real there through the community and the folks around us. There is joy in the world today. And I can feel that joy together as we gather here. So as we remember Mary's song to God, 
as we remember the babies recognizing each other, as we remember the miracles, as we remember the many ways that God was with the people in this story. I'd like invite us to celebrate the joy that is in the world. Um, and hopefully, once again, we will share the screen and we're going to share in joy to the world. Um, again, I don't know if there's an intro. I can't remember. I've done so many services this week. I can't remember where if Susan has an intro to this or not. But as we sing, the words will come on the screen and we can share together in joy to the world. We mute ourselves. Yes, please do. It's fun. I don't know if you were watching, but it's fun to see everybody at different places in the song at the same time. The joy that that brings to know we are still singing the song together, even if we're at different places and that kind of like life in our faith. We're all living life, but faith, we're at different spaces and places. So thank you so much. Let's, um, let's close together in prayer. I'm going to stop the share again that we can share in the joy of seeing each other. Let's pray. <sighs> joy, God of joy and celebration. As we come to this week, allow us to focus our minds and our hearts on you. Allow us to share the gratitude of you coming to earth, the Emmanuel, God with us. Yes, there's all kinds of stuff going on around us. Yes, there's mess. Yes, there's grief. Yes, there's sorrow. Ah, in it all, oh God, help us to be grateful for your love, for the peace that you bring, for the hope and the joy that is prevalent here in our lives because we have faith, faith that this baby wrapped in the swaddling clothes that came 2000 years ago is a going to come again. And in this Christmas season, may we be the ones who give the light to the world, give the hope to the world so that we can find gratitude and happiness in all we do. Amen. All right, couple of announcements. I was mentioning earlier that um, we do have the blue Christmas coming up tomorrow night for those of you who are interested. Thanks so much to those of you who participated. Um, I will be sending out a link via email as well. 
Uh, it starts at 7 p.m. Uh, so hopefully, you know, you got to be there at 7 because it's starting. It's on, it's YouTube and it's geared to go off at 7. So um, enjoy that. It was a service that was put together by my daughter. Uh, and she gave me per permission to, um, to share it with our congregation. You will see her beautiful voice, her beautiful face on that tape as well. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, Oren, we did not note that it was the San Diego Gay Men's Chorus that was singing. So I'm going to try and attach that somehow to the link that goes out to let folks know. And I will make sure that note gets put in the Christmas Eve service. Um, so my apologies for that, but it will be attached in the Facebook uh, announcement that the Gay Men's Chorus is singing Silent Night there. It's beautiful. Um, we do have Christmas Eve at nine o'clock. It, it um, is again, YouTube, it goes off at nine and it's the sharing of the story of Jesus uh, with candlelight communion and campfire. And we wish you a Merry Christmas at the end. Um, a lot of the component parts that we have had over the years, but put together perhaps a little differently since we're in COVID. Um, there is, <coughs> Wednesday night, we do have a community connection hour at six. Everybody's welcome to do that. Um, Jay and Judy will be doing worship next week as I'm off the next two weeks. Uh, June, June. Boy, I wish we were June. That means we might have the vaccine already. January, um, <laughs> Jay will be sharing with uh, you all on YouTube with the uh, Jesus in the temple. I'm trying to think, are there other announcements? Anybody that we should make that I kind of forgot? I just have a question. Did, yeah. announce, did announcements go out this week? I yes. believe yeah, so. Them. You did not get a, okay. No, I have been getting them. Yeah, it's been, like I said, it's been crazy. Um, this this week as we've worked at putting one two three four five services together so if someone could forward them to me yes I it. yes i will make myself a note to go in and do that right after worship My i will do it i will do it i've done it the last two weeks i'll do okay. it okay thank you thanks thank Judy. you appreciate that um, all right. Any other announcements? Oh, I was sharing a little earlier about the asylum program and how we're moving into the possible, the board has approved the opening of the gathering place as a temporary shelter as the borders are kind of going, you know, once Biden gets in borders are gonna open and there's gonna be needs. And Catherine is working with getting a 17 year old out of detention. Um, so, and he's going to be moving into a home as part of our neighbor program. And so we're keeping, keep that in your prayers as we work with um, the lawyers and all that needs to happen in order for that abolition, in order for him to come out. I would invite you to keep Catherine in your prayers. She's really gone national uh, with all that she's doing. Um, what last week she was talking with Harrisburg Church of the Brethren and she's been in Texas. She's been in Ohio on calls. So um, keep her in your prayers as she continues to um, reach out and share with churches nationally to try and get people um, homes and sponsors as they, uh, as she they become as she becomes aware of those needs. It's an amazing ministry that we're a part of through her. Um, she's just amazing. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. I think that might be it. So I will say th thank you so much. Um, this service, for as much as we got recorded, will be put up this afternoon, and um, we will 
uh, be able to see that then. So feel free to come off mute, share as you'd like as our fellowship hour after worship continues. Where are the cookies? Um, <laughs> I had them, They're but I Mary's ate them house. all in the break. Oh, <laughs> They're at Mary's house. Uh, yeah, they're at Mary's house. Actually, some of those came home with me. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> we, have, we have crackers today. <laughs> That's communion. Oh, there we go. I'm too late. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, crackers and Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. I nice to see everybody. Bye bye. Good to see, see you too, bye -bye. CC. Bye bye, bye, -bye CC. God bless. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. I put a link at the beginning of the chat for the um, Saturn Jupiter view on Solstice. Oh, yeah? yeah, I wasn't sure if I could click it when it was up there, if it would kind of screw up the. <laughs> yeah. um, it'll take, the you, it'll take you there, but it won't keep you. Pardon yeah. me. It'll it'll take you there, but it won't kick you off Zoom. Okay. It'll you know Zoom will, you Zoom will disappear, but you can still see it at the bottom of or at the top of your somewhere on your on your screen. You'll still see the Zoom link. It doesn't disconnect you from Zoom. It just takes you. Yeah, to I'm going to just add this to my um, favorites. So it is Saturn and Jupiter. And then I will come back. Yeah. There it is, right there. No Venus. Okay, I'm back. No, no. <clears throat> I have to, I have a thing coming up with my family. You have what? Yeah, I have to get Give ready. them our best. So, a Zoom. I have a family Zoom coming up. In okay, bye. 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 I had a nice experience with Amazon yesterday, of all things. Really? I was really concerned because I bought my great nephew a video camera and um, it requires a memory card. And so I also bought a 32 gigabyte memory card to go in it. And then, you know, and I was very cognizant of things that said <laughs> shipped after Christmas to make sure I didn't. Well, anyway, this one came up and they kept changing the date and changing the date. And finally, the delivery date was January 4th. And I thought, you know, he can't even try out his camera without the card. And so um, I called Amazon and I said, you know, I would like to um, cancel that one and buy a different one that arrives before Christmas. But I had a, um, a promo that was applied to that one and I would lose the promo. And she says, oh, that's OK. First of all, yes, you can cancel it because it hasn't been shipped. And I will apply the promo to the new purchase. And so when I, I said, well, you know, let me order it while you're still on the line in case there's an issue. And when it came up, the thing which was actually more expensive than the one that I had purchased originally, my final price was a dollar and a quarter. And I said, um, <laughs> I think you put too much of a promo back on there. And she says, well, I just threw another $5 in for your trouble. And, uh, and it's scheduled to arrive tomorrow. So... I was thrilled because I was kind of stressed out about the fact that the only thing I bought my great nephew, he wouldn't be able to use until January. So, yeah. So I gave her a really good review. Yeah. Bye, Sarah, Steve. Yeah. I, I, I was wondering if you'd heard anything lately from Gordon. Um, I know that they got the okay from the court. They've got oh, did the, they? Yeah, they got their paper back couple weeks ago okay i knew that that was like the 15th so i hadn't i hadn't contacted him this week i could i should probably do that this they got what back um gordon uh, and susan were are looking to uh get married and there was some paperwork that they needed to oh. get since she's immigrant uh-huh so um they were supposed to get some reports back on that on the 15th of december so you haven't heard yeah. anything I've heard that they, they did get get it back and the divorce is final and everything through the courts. Oh, good. So. Okay. Great. Well, I will have to call him and see what's up. I know that they're okay. looking they're looking to get married. I don't know if they're going to do that here on campus or if they're going to do it with um you know in the court system. Yeah, I don't know. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. 
Okay, yeah, I will um, definitely make a note to do that too. <clears throat> okay, well, goodbye, everybody. Bye, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thank See you, you later. Uh -huh. okay. This week's getting busier too. <laughs> Sarah, are are you going to be leaving, uh, uh, go out of town or something for, no? No, we're not going anywhere this time. Um, we decided we're just going to stay home. So okay, um, I'll be at the house and just probably the plan is to get some carpets cleaned Ah. <laughs> you know, get the rugs, get the rugs um, shampooed okay. um, and some of those things. Now tell them there's a room over here too. <laughs> <laughs> Mine needs replaced. Oh, well, yeah. well yeah. I mean, I put it in when I bought the house in 1980. <laughs> so uh, yeah, probably. Seen better days. Well, it comes one out, so. <laughs> I think the foam is all disintegrated and uh, well, I have a little something to put on your porch so uh, uh, it's just a little something. Well, but thank you. Enjoy it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, great. Let me know. I will mask up and come out. <laughs> okay. And um, I have this big thing in my room. This big <laughs> thing that um, I'm a, oh, and she left. I'm assuming is Vicky's um, <laughs> quilt that she gave me in a frame. Oh, really? Oh. I think that's, yeah, that's what <laughs> Bill had told me he was going to get me. And it's huge. It's like, I don't know where we're going to put it. Um, <laughs> we'll find a space. I'll take a picture of it and I'll, sh I'll send it to you and Vicky. Okay, oh, great. great. That'd be fun. Yeah. To see. Yeah. yeah. I really like that. All right. So Vicky took off. Yep. Her her next well, bye, y'all. Okay. Bye bye, bye, bye. I guess it's Merry bye. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Everybody. We'll see you Wednesday. We'll see you Wednesday night. Okay. Yeah. And Thursday's not Zoom, right? The Christmas Eve service? No, it's YouTube. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Maybe next year. I guess I'll light my candle and take my communion by myself. There you <laughs> go. Okay. Or break down and go on YouTube for one service. Yeah. Well, no, I don't mean that. I mean, I, if I go on YouTube, I'm still doing it by myself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'll miss yeah, you. So was I. <laughs> oh. Yep. All righty. We'll see you. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.